got a shark up there. Black tip reef shark. Oh, there's a bunch actually. These are proper adults. Some of them are six foot long, two meters. They've got awesome night vision, which gives them an advantage over their prey. This is their time to hunt. Ooh. Heartbeat. <laughs> Welcome back. We are live. And that was National Geographic Explorer Bertie Gregory taking a night dive with sharks, as you saw, in Indonesia. And he gets paid to do that? <laughs> That's his new Disney Plus series, Animals Up Close with Bertie Gregory. Bertie spends his time climbing the steep mountains in Chile, diving into the below zero freezing depths of the Southern Ocean and exploring the vast wilderness of Botswana. But just another day in the office for him, terrifying for me to just watch on TV. <laughs> But today he's here to open up about an incredible full circle moment he recently had that stands out among the wonderful and amazing connections that he's made on his extraordinary journey. It involves his favorite big cat. It's a puma named Pataka, who he's known since she was just a cub. But first, Bertie is giving us a close up look at his most recent adventures. Take a look. I've been all over the world as a wildlife filmmaker. The best stories are often the hardest to get to. I want to go up there. <laughs> That's insane. Now here, harsh weather and powerful predators are never far away. Let's go. There's got to be easier ways to earn a living. <laughs> there got to be easier ways to learn a living. Tam fam, out from the wild and now in our house. Please welcome to the Tam fam, Bertie Gray. can watch your show and you all day long. I don't want to join the party. Why not? Why not? I'm just gonna be honest with you, I'm gonna be <laughs> terrified. Like the shark scene alone, there you are. And you're saying, you know, this is how they operate. This is their world. This is when they basically hunt for their prey and you're in the middle of it all. Do you ever, does your mind ever wonder like, how did I get here? I mean, yeah, but at the same time, you know, you're always used to what you're used to, right? right. So, like, to me, this is far more terrifying. The Tampa? <laughs> so, okay, so well, let's as, visualize as, as, that. So I'm picturing them <laughs> now as shark okay, in the well, water. That, but, that's, but that's perfect way of thinking about it. Because right. if you or I walk into a bar, right, immediately we're reading the room to figure out where we're going to sit. Right. And if you look around, you can read people's body language. You know, you can read the, the, the angry people, the friendly people, the fun people. <laughs> Sharks are exactly the same. I love the woman in the gold glitter dress. She should look so innocent, like <laughs> the innocent people. I mean, that's a predator up there. I see you. Yeah, that's a good point. You look around your surroundings and you process, the and that's what you're body, doing. The animals have body language. Like yeah. a shark, it's pectoral fins, the little fins off its side. If they're pointed down and its back's really arched, that means it's it's like on edge and ready to go. So that's a shark you maybe don't want to What is that again? With. It's like super on it. Peck fins down, okay. arch back. So look for that. Peck fins arch back. And that's what you know to get out of there. Uh, this story of the puma cub Pataka that you met in Patagonia, Chile. Um, and, and there's a full circle moment that has touched your heart. You've seen and done so much. But why did this really hit your heart? Well, so I first met Pataka, yeah, when she was just a cub. She was completely reliant on her mother. She was this lovely, bubbly ball of fluff. <laughs> You know, ha had mum left her, she would have been completely useless and not able to survive. But four years on, we decided for this show, Animals Up Close, it was time to go see how she was doing. And not only has she survived, but she's now transformed into this amazing, powerful boss mum with two wow. cubs of her own. And we followed her for five weeks. How did you find me, you know, obviously years later, how did you locate her? So the best part about my job is that as well as getting to hang out with cool animals, I get to hang out with cool people. And we have amazing local teams and we work with one of the best puma trackers in the business. He's called Roberto Donoso. Oh. And he's been following her 
while I've been gone. And um, yeah, he, he took us back to, to find her. And we have to re-find her every day. So we followed her over 51 days, but every day How we How elusive are Puma? I know that certain animals are incredibly difficult for us to even gather um, research on because they are elusive. Totally. I mean, in, in the US, like you, you have loads of Pumas here, but they're incredibly elusive. A lot of that, the reason, because humans persecute them here. They're not treated very nicely. Down in the protected area that we were filming them, um, they have become uh, kind of accustomed to people. They know people aren't, aren't a threat to them. And, and as a result, we can be on foot with, with Pataka. And I don't know of anywhere else in the world where you can be on foot with a, with a big cat wow. and be super safe. Obviously, you know, she didn't... Remember that viral video some years ago, the lion saw the guy and he runs over and they <laughs> hug? That's not this show. So this she, is a wild puma. She's a wild puma. <laughs> and I should say, I think of it as like a long-lost friendship, like a long-lost friend, but it's a very much a one-way relationship, right? <laughs> yeah, there was has, no, like, hey, Patek, she, I'm she's here. She's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'm going to go do my thing. But I would imagine smell and scent seem familiar to them, or am I overthinking? Have I watched The Lion King too much? <laughs> <laughs> Probably, again, I want to be on your side. I want her to really like me, but... I mean, I imagine over that 51-day period, yeah. I mean, to, yeah, I mean, they totally know the difference between different people. Yeah. So she was probably like, oh, that's the guy who keeps following me around. <laughs> he keeps following cool, I've man, seen him become go. a star on TV. <laughs> um, but you make so many great parallels between who we are and who they are and, and our journeys. You, you mentioned it in a quote in, in an article even, talking about these parallels between our lives and, and wildlife and the reminder of the importance and the connection of what you do and what you educate us on in the show. Totally. Well, I guess it's, it's the, you know, the thing that I'm most proud of about the show is that as well as showing people how challenging these animals' lives are and how challenging our job is to keep up with them, we also set these animals in a bigger environmental context. You know, we humans are not doing very nice things to, to wildlife around the world and we need to do more. And we show, really exciting, that there's yeah. a bunch of people around the world doing some great stuff to, to change our relationship with the natural world. And that's, that's great for wildlife and, and great for people as well. You have a dream job. Can I just <laughs> tell you, look at this. Yeah. Congratulations on everything. Birdie, National Geographic, Animals Up Close with Birdie Gregory is now streaming on Disney+. Plus. Congratulations. We're so happy you got off the beat and came in with the <laughs> wild animals in our studio. <laughs>